Hey, it's your girl Ashanti, and you're watching I Dial Her. Well, my last album came out in 2008, so between 2009 and like 2011, 2012, I kind of walked away from seven majors, and it was really hard, you know, um, because it was kind of like fear of the unknown. So as I was going through that, I was in the studio constantly, and it wasn't really until I came up with the title of my head, Braveheart, that I really started to concentrate on an actual album, you know, and a body of work. So the evolution, it was weird. It was kind of like me just working, working, working. And then when I got the title, the album, it kind of became a template for the last two, three years of my life. For me, I think um, it's always great to have a good song, you know, and if it doesn't make the album Business-wise, it may not be the best, but for your fans, it's still a good thing. I felt like I wanted to give a little more, and I felt like if people had already heard these, it wouldn't be as fair, and I felt like I wanted to give them just a little bit more music. Again, because having the gap between 2008 and now, more music doesn't hurt, you know? So I felt like, okay, they heard that one, I'll give them another one instead. It's funny, everyone thought that I was putting out album covers, but they were promo shots. And I just, I kind of just let the blogs run with it. <laughs> because I'm like, I never officially ever said, here's my album cover until my album cover, you know? And um, I work with an amazing team, an amazing photographer, and we had great shots. So we just put them out there. And again, people were like, I guess, assuming. And I'm just like, okay. <laughs> The majors versus the indies. Um, it's funny because that gap is becoming a little bit closer. And I feel like as an indie artist, you definitely have to work a lot harder. You have to be very hands-on, but the rewards are a lot bigger. With a major, you know, you have a huge staff, but you still have to work as hard as an indie artist and the percentages are not as big. <laughs> so the rewards are not as sweet, you know, but of course anyone would want a huge engine and a huge staff, you know, to, to have that outlet to be global and to make things happen simultaneously. You know, when you're in indie, you just, it's not possible. You have to do the legwork, you know, and it's a little more time consuming and it's a lot harder. Um, <clears throat> but when you map out the business behind it, if you're successful as an indie, it's a blessing. It really, it really, 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 really is. And just for your integrity, you know, to know that you can do something on your own and control your own destiny, you know, with me just owning my masters and, and just being a, a CEO and being a boss and kind of just learning, especially as a woman in this, you know, very male dominated business. <laughs> I would definitely say Scars is the deepest record. Um, it was very emotional when I wrote the record. It was very emotional when I sang the record. It was emotional when I listened back. <laughs> um, and it's funny because there are so many people that relate, and that is exactly how I felt at that moment. You know, you're going through something and you're like, <laughs> you know, that's how I was writing the record. And this is a true story. My cousin called my dad and was like, do you know? You know, she has her boyfriend, her baby's dad, and I think they have five kids now. And she's like, do you know he called and said, why did you tell your cousin all of our business? She's over there writing records on her album about our relationship. And I was like, what? And that's like, that's the most honest, like sincere thing that I've heard thus far about this record because people really are touched by it. And I feel like as an artist and as a writer, when you're able to penetrate and have a man <laughs> feel like they're talking about you, it's one of the best things in the world. I think the iTunes chart has picked my next single. <laughs> and I think it's gonna be early in the morning featuring French Montana. I got a, um, a text yesterday that said it was the most sold R&B single on iTunes. So I think we're gonna have to go with that. <laughs> well, 
Well, I named my record label Written Entertainment because I write all my records and it's entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, being a boss is, is a lot of hard work. It really is. You know, it's not only my career and my life, it's my staff. You know, I take care of my family and then my staff has family. And then just making those life altering decisions is very crucial, you know, and I've made some very expensive mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know, I would love to be in the studio all day, every day, but at, at the end, I have to sign those invoices. I have to approve those budgets, but I still have to be creative. I have to pick the artwork and find the producer and find the photographer and get the studio and the style. You know what I mean? Like, it's a lot that goes into it. So I have to kind of balance it, you know, and, and I hope that this is something that inspires other women as well, because I feel like if, if I can do it, I want other women to feel like they can do it, you know, and, and that respect is, it's a beautiful thing. You know, I get texts from a lot of guys and they're like, I'm proud of you. <laughs>